warm greetings from TNV Academy. Today in this session, we are going to discuss about IEC 62304, which stands for Medical Device Software, Software Lifecycle Processes. We will be discussing the various elements of the standard one by one. So let's begin our discussion. IEC 62304, Medical Device Software, Software Lifecycle Processes is an international standard published by the International Electrotechnical Commission IEC. The standard specifies life cycle requirements for the development of medical software and software within medical devices. It has been adopted as national standards and therefore can be used as a benchmark to comply with regulatory requirements. IEC 62304 is a functional safety standard that covers safe design and maintenance of software. It provides processes, activities and tasks to ensure safety. It applies to development and maintenance of medical device software when the software is itself a medical device or the software is an embedded or integral part of the final medical device. IEC 62304 applies to medical device development when software is an integral component to medical device production. It defines the software life cycle when the software stands alone as a medical device is a component of medical device or is used in the production of a medical device. IEC 62304 provides guidance to the manufacturer on planning development and post-market surveillance activities for medical device software to ensure companies are in compliance with both US and other international regulatory requirements. When manufacturers build software that either functions as a medical device SEMD or that is to be incorporated into a medical device SIMD, the stakes are high and therefore clear and high standards are needed. Every caution is needed to ensure the safety of patients and efficiency of medical device software used in patient care. IEC 62304 is one of the standards that provides guardrails that enhance the quality of medical device software reaching patients. The underlying principles of IEC 62304 are rigorous planning through documentation, testing and verification of everything and finally traceability, a transparent mechanism to verify compliance of all parts of the standard. So we will now discuss about IEC 62304 software safety classification. It's important to ensure safety from the start of development. Product testing isn't enough to ensure patient safety and patient safety is critical. Plus building safety into your processes early on saves time and expense later. Software safety classification in the standard determines the safety related processes you will need to use. This impacts the entire software development lifecycle from requirements and coding to release and maintenance. The standard defines three safety classes for software. Class A, no injury or damage to health is possible. Class B, injury is possible but no serious. Class C, death or serious injury is possible. So we will now discuss about the components of sections of IEC 62304. Clause 4, general requirements. Clause 4. General requirements specifies the need for a quality management system, risk management, software safety classification and handling of legacy software. Quality management system ISO 13485 is international standard for quality management system for medical device manufacturers. Compliance with other national regulations for QMS are allowed. For example, in the US, the Food and Drug Administration FDA currently utilizes 21 CFR A20. However, there are imminent plans to transition to ISO 13485. Risk Management IEC 62304 requires manufacturers to be in compliance with the standard for risk management ISO 14971 2019. Legacy Software 
IEC 62304 subclauses 4.4 outlines a step manufacturer must take if choosing to incorporate legacy software into the medical device. These steps include risk management activities, gap analysis, gap closure, and rational for use of legacy software. Clause 5 Software Development Process Clause 5 is the core of the standard and consistent of the following subclauses. 5.1 Software Development Planning This subclause specifies the requirement for planning the activities, inputs, and outputs of the software development process. It specifies the need to include details, plans for processes, deliverables, testing, traceability, documentation, risk management, software configuration change management, and problem resolution. 5.2 Software Requirements Analysis This subclause specifies how software requirements analysis is to be conducted, including specification of software requirements from system requirements, functionality and capability requirements, interface and compatibility specifications, cyber security requirements, data structures requirements, installation and maintenance requirements, verification requirements, testing and acceptability criteria requirements, and updates and regression testing requirements. 5.3 Software Architectural Design This subclause specifies the requirements related to software architectural design, including the need to transform software requirements into an architecture, the need to develop architecture for the interactions, interfaces or connections, between software items, software systems, and external components such as hardware accessories. The need to specify functional, capability, software, and hardware requirements of SOUP and proper segmentation of architectural component to enable robust risk management of components with distinct risk profiles, for example, cybersecurity considerations, database integrity, etc. 5.4 Software Detailed Design This subclause specifies that the manufacturer will subdivide the software into software units and document and verify a detailed design of each software unit and interfaces. This is to be done with sufficient detail to enable correct implementation of the medical device software. 5.5 Software Unit Implementation this can be true of as a software coding phase or building phase, where the prior sub-clauses were serving to establish the blueprint of what is to be coded or built. This sub-clauses must include verification for the various software units and must specify verification acceptance criteria. 5.6 Software Integration and Integration Testing This part can be true of as a gluing phase including verification that the glue works and that the joint units are properly joined and are working well together. Importantly, regression testing must be done. Furthermore, amongst other things, testing must be rigorously documented, repeatable, verifiable, and must assess both intended use and forcible misuse scenarios. 5.7 Software System Testing the software system should be tested. Clear acceptance criteria must be specified. Testing must be robust and rigorously documented. 5.8 Software release for utilization at a system level. It specifies requirements for software release including verification, documentation, anomaly detection, worsening and reliable delivery. Clause 6 Software maintenance processes. This clause specifies the need for a software maintenance plan and software maintenance processes. This includes details on problem reporting, feedback evaluation, problem resolution processes, change request analysis and approval, communication with users and regulators, risk management or maintenance processes, and software release after maintenance activities. Clause 7. Software Risk Management Process this clause is based on ISO 14971, Risk Management for Medical Device Software, 
See figures below from ISO 14971-2019. See figures below. Of note, this is more recent than IC 62304 version 1.1, which was released in 2015. Self hazards specifically named in IEC 62304 include SOUP and associated risk. Clause 8 Software Configuration Management Process This clause mandates documentation and implementation of configuration items, their change control, traceability, and verification. Including change verification, traceability, and overall configuration status accounting. Clause 9. Software Problem Resolution Process This clause specifies need for a process for problem resolution. It includes identification of the problem, reporting, problem investigation and analysis, resolution, change control, communication with affected parties, problem resolution, verification of problem resolution, and documentation. So we have now come to the conclusion of this session. In case you have any questions or queries regarding the topic which we have discussed today, then please put them in the comment section of the video and we will be really happy answering them. Till we meet next, special us from TNV Academy. Thank you.